Oh, another good story. Would you remember a character called Paul Doherty? Yeah, yeah. Doc was the public Tic Tac. So it was a meeting at Warwick, a night meeting I'd been to. I think it was the King George VI meeting. I'd left after about the third or fourth race, dashing up before pre-motorways. Doc is going to be a doll in the pound with me. Get to the track. I'll get there about 15 minutes before the kickoff. I'd rung Sean Graham up on the way up. Palomine used to drive him. He was driving. I'd rung them up, get a card. So away we go. So at the first four five races, three favourites have won and a second in. I'm getting about three grand. Every book is starving on the track. Second race, Captain George, some firm, pays a pony. As I went to grab a pony, he got a bird with him, Dr. T. Mawelia. You imagine, you know, collared, big oak tree rings. Mawelia, go and get Michael and I a nice bottle of champagne. Get a glass for yourself, Mawelia. I can't stand champagne. I like red wine. Anyhow, as Mawelia's walking away, Mawelia, make it Lanson. Michael's not fond of the Moe. Anyhow, we're drinking the champagne. There was about that much left in the bottle. There was a fella called George Henry. On good horses and dogs. Nice fella, George. He owned a lot of nightclubs. George, you must have a glass of champagne with us. Of course, it wasn't enough to wet his lips. So they better drink it. George buys a bottle. So anyhow, that's, that's the secret. We're now coming two races to go. Doc is telling me you're the greatest bookie on the... He's a dollar in the pound. He's got 800 quid for his work. You're the greatest bookie on the... You've got these by the cobblers. You're going much you're going to get. Anyhow, it comes to the fifth race. For It was a flat meeting. Have you ever been to Warwick? Yeah. Yeah, well, they go around the far side anyhow. So it was a flat meeting. 11 away to each of two. 300 of 30. 1,000 of one, the fourth in. He says, Michael... I don't like interrupting, he said, because you're doing a marvellous job. He said, but the, this third in, this is all cobblers, by the way, Doherty. He says, um, I saw it run a Catrick early in the week. It couldn't get out of its own way. Leave it to me, Paul. Now, even bad bookies would make 11 or 8 each or 2 and under the 30 pay. I could have smashed it in. I was taking 8 and 10 grand a race. You know, I smashed it in, bid five or 600 quid overs. Leave it to me, Paul. So we stand it for the best part what we're winning. As they go over the far side, there's the two favourites arm in arm, about four lengths behind, the one we've stood, the rags coming round the first bend. Anyhow, bosh, bosh, the rags, old Doherty. Whoa, another bottle of champagne for the wheelie and my this evening. All of a sudden, it's closing. One of the favourites drops out. Where I bet there, I was about 20 yards short of the line. It's a ding-dong battle. Bang, the bogey gets up. You can see it's one. Photo, one a desperate short head. Silence, talk it's a bunch of Now, as soon as it's gone past the line, ding dong, ding dong, steward's inquiry, objection. Well, it's obvious, he said. The favourite was a good length in front here, passing us. Anyhow, 20 minutes later, you could bet six to four on the winner keeping the race. Result stands. We got a queue. All the bookies have got out of it, 11 or 8 each or two. We're about level. We got a queue anyhow. Just about got chance to bet on the last race. Some has been three, he's now about a five to four chance. So I stand it for about three grand. There was big crowds there. All he could hear was a roar about a fern going, you ain't got to be told what swept in the front. All of a sudden, do you remember the big clerking books? Bang, he throws the clerking book, smashes it on the floor. Can't I rip my own money up without, you might know the swear words, without somebody like you ripping up for me. So I said to him, Paul, if you'd have kept your trap shut, would have got the money anyhow. He says, what have I got to give you? I said, 800 pounds. So he's digging the 800 pound up. Now, my really, it's never left the joint all night long. Now, he was going to have a right play up. I'll be like, don't worry about her, you know. He said, he pays his 800. He says, do me a favour. Get rid of my wheelie for me. I can't face her. <laughs> that was Paul Doherty. He died recently. Paul, another story. He loved to bet. He had terrible glasses. He was like, what, Charlie? Was it Charlie Chan? Do you remember him, the detective? He couldn't see. He couldn't see. But anybody asked for odds, he'd be on. He'd better 10 pounds on. He got beat 100 yards. Anyhow, his face was as red as a beetroot. All the tic tacs and clerks and nubbling, head down. And we used to watch the race just inside, round from my joints on the rails. So I said, Paul, you've got money. Why should you worry about him having a say at you? He, all of a sudden, he pecked his chest out. He says, you're quite right. He said, I should be going now to a nice fillet steak 
with the cheese board, a nice bottle of champagne. These would be lucky to go in home to get a packet of fish and chips and a Sam Brown. I should worry about these. And that was Paul. He was a character. You know, he was a big character. But he was another one people either loved or loathed, similar to myself. One of the last stories I'll tell you is concerns John McCurick. He would always stand by my joints. I was good at getting free publicity. I'd always go on the TV and something. Anyhow, I bet at Newmarket. It was a desperate finish. I'd, stood the, I'd done about eight grand on this race. You could see it had won, a desperate short head. Anyhow, McCurry comes running up to me. He says, we're on a commercial break. We're on a commercial break. We're coming back within 15 seconds. Make something to make them laugh. I says, John, better still, I've just done a penny worth there. <laughs> Get somebody up to make me laugh. This is a prequel when people like me and all love me. This is a true story. At Warwick one day, I'm betting on the boards. An old girl comes up with a £20 note. Can I have a £9 or two? Certainly, love. As I'm fishing in the yard to get me the change, Henry Goulder was a big punter on good horses, 9000 or two. The horse started 13 away, you ain't got to be told. Well, he's more interested in how far it won. I think it was a fence and a half. So from that day onwards, I would never bet people unless they gave me the correct change. Even if they wanted a, a five run and give me a ten and a nose, it took me more time to explain to them. But once bitten, twice shy. So that was the story then.